Yeah, we're still speaking with Cricket West Indies CEO, Johnny Grave, but we shift the discussion to the CG Insurance Super 50, which will be played in Trinidad and Tobago from the 17th of October to the 11th of November. Once again, combined campuses and colleges and the West Indies Academy will join the six territorial franchises, Barbados Pride, Jamaica Scorpions, uh, Leeward Islands Hurricanes, Windward Islands Volcanoes, TNT Red Force and the Guyana Harpy Eagles making a new eight-team league format. The top four teams after the round-robin phase will advance to the semis with the first playing fourth and second taking on third. And uh, let me start here, Johnny, by um, going in the obvious direction. A lot more cricket because of the format. Everyone plays everyone. And the immediate upshot of this is that the players will, will have more games in the 50-over format. Yes, yeah, it's, it's sort of a, a new initiative from our new director of cricket, Miles Baskin, who, um, who again has, has looked at the tournament and from a pure competition perspective, rather than having two groups and, and playing either in a group twice and then semi finals and finals, a slightly pure uh, move forward to the knockout phase of semi final and final. So, with that change in, in tournament structure and with some um, maintenance work that's happening at the Sir Richard Cricket Ground in, in Antigua and all the cricket that we've got coming up. We've uh, been able to work with the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board and we'll be hosting the whole tournament in Trinidad and Tobago playing across the three venues there of the Brian Lara Cricket Academy, the Queen's Park Oval and the, the Frank Royal Ground at the St Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies. So it's, um, yeah, it's an exciting tournament and certainly for us with the disappointment of uh, Zimbabwe and not being part of the 50 over World Cup. It's it's our first time really to to look at what will be a new generation of players that are building towards the 2027 World Cup in this format and uh, one in which we need to uh, make big, big strides and big improvements. So it's um, it's a really important um, tournament for us um, following the CPL. Yeah, and, and significantly, it will be played at the same time that the World Cup is being played. Um, any any comment on that? Because while we are watching the Super 50, uh, the World Cup goes on in India and the disappointment of West Indies fans not seeing their team there, um, I'm not sure how they'll, they'll take that watching this, the Super 50. Yeah, look, it's the reality. It's obviously hugely disappointing to all of us. But um, you know, I hope also all the players are looking endlessly on at India, thinking we need to get there. And that, you know, that, that's the big hook and opportunity. And when... Know, whoever lifts the trophy in Ahmedabad at the end of November and pockets the, the four million US dollars worth of prize money, hopefully that will resonate with our players and um, they, they'll all do what they need to do to, to improve as a, individually and collectively. And certainly Cricket West Indies will be doing absolutely everything we can to ensure that um, we've got a pool of players that are working under the leadership of Darren Sammy to ensure that come 2027, firstly, we're there and and more importantly, we go there with a real chance of success and, and to try and win a, a third uh, Cricket World Cup in the 50-over tournament. Yeah, a huge concern for cricket fans, Johnny, has been the absence in some instances of no sponsorship for regional tournaments. CGI Insurance back here with the Super 50. How, how big is their contribution and how, uh, how, how long is this cycle of sponsorship from CG Insurance? Yeah, CG United have been a, a major, major backer for us in the last few years, and um, they've recently resigned and committed to another four-year period. So it, it's a, it's a huge support for us. Not only do they sponsor us, but they provide the private medical healthcare insurance to all of our contracted players. So over 130 players have that knowledge that should they uh, fall ill or sick, they've got that insurance behind them. So um, they've been fantastic partners for us. They support the 50 over. A format throughout just the international level all the way through to this regional tournament both for the men and women and um, yeah we're enormously grateful for their support as we are with all of our sponsors and and clearly as we're we're trying to uh, play more cricket and um, and move up the rankings uh, we we need uh, more and more support from from corporate caribbean and from global brands around the world um, who are looking to uh, to use our teams and use our tournaments to promote their, their products and services. So, um, yeah, sponsors continue to be, you know, a really important uh, stakeholder group within, a, within the, the ecosystem of West Indies cricket. Yeah, Johnny, I know you touched on it um, earlier, but I just want to uh, get 
something a little bit clearer here. Can you give us, um, because I suspect there must have been several discussions with the timing of the Super 50. So can you give us an idea of the rationale for dropping the Super 50 pretty much smack in the middle of the 50 over World Cup? I guess because we're not there. So if we're not playing in, in India, then there's there's no other cricket for us to play internationally. So it's the it's always really now in, in recent times been anchored towards that um, October, November window. What we're looking to do um, with the with our cricket is is really make six months of the year very Red Bull focused. So January all the way through to sort of May, we'll have our first class cricket, our West Indies Championship four day tournament. That then leads into a, normally an A-team tour and then test match cricket that we host in June. And then really for the second part of the year, um, building into the White Ball International Series, this Caribbean Premier League that's currently going on, and then into Super 50, we have very much of a, a White Ball focus. So I think the October-November window that gives us the opportunity to still have an A-team tour um, before Christmas. So immediately after this um, Super 50, we're going to be hosting the Ireland Academy, who will come and play the West Indies Academy in Antigua. Uh, we're then also going to go to South Africa on an 18 tour for four day cricket and 50 over cricket before Christmas. So uh, we're also hosting, as you know, England in the Caribbean in December. So plenty of cricket coming up and um, almost non stop cricket for our professional men, which is you know, ultimately what we're looking to do is as we want them to be able to hone their, their skills in tournaments, um, but also put in the work in between the tournaments uh, and our international tours and A-team tours um, so that they can improve, as I said earlier, individually and collectively. Yeah, I know as well that we've had issues in the past with having all our best players available for a tournament like the Super 50. I think it has improved without a doubt since we've gone to um, the October-November window, as you pointed out. Um, but given the fact that the World Cup will be going on, does it ease any concern in that area? Because there is essentially, as, as far as I can see, no franchise cricket that should pull our best players away from the Super 50 tournament. So this should be a tournament where the very best West Indies players are taking part for the various franchise teams. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that is one of the benefits from... Um, I guess having the the ICC tournament window where there's no other uh, leagues happening, so all of our players who want to play 50 over cricket, and I think that would be the only element that would rule players out. Those players that maybe think the 2027 World Cup is too far away from them, and therefore they're looking to maybe focus on one or two of the other formats, either Test matches or or T20 only players. Then um, yeah, but everyone who wants to play 50 over cricket, certainly from our perspective everyone that wants to be in consideration for that 2027 uh, World Cup, uh, we would expect to be fully available and, and putting in the work and the performances uh, that would warrant them to be selected into the international side because we've got uh, 50 over engagements at international level against England before Christmas and immediately afterwards against Australia. So again, the cricket world never really stops and um, our preparation, as I said earlier, for the 2027 World Cup really starts in Trinidad with the start of the CG United Super 50. Yeah, um, I have a question for you, Johnny, um, which probably is better directed to the new uh, director of cricket, Miles Bascom. But I heard Darren Sammy, the white ball coach, talking on Voice of Barbados Radio this morning, and he expressed some disappointment that he isn't seeing players putting their hands up in the CPL T20. He, he was hoping, stroke expecting, to probably see you know some new young fast bowler or a new spinner um, putting their hands up, breaking the door down as, as newbies, as uh, you know, prospects for international cricket. He said he didn't quite get that from the CPL. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that he'll be having a close look at the Super 50 uh, and the ODI format to see um, you know, players um, putting their hands up because the, the team, West Indies-wise, is struggling in 50 over cricket. Yeah, I think um, I think certainly, I don't know exactly when Darren made those comments, but um, it was great to see Casey Carty, for example, finally get an opportunity with the Trinidad and Tobago uh, uh, night riders and, and score a century. We've yeah. seen more centur centurions. He did, he, he did say fast bowler and spinner, though, um, to be specific. So I oh, know okay, sorry. He, yeah. he may have been impressed with Casey Carty's knock, which we all were, but I, I remember him specifically saying a new pacer and a new spinner. 
Uh, yeah, look, and um, yeah, I think um, I think that generally in CPL, you know, we're looking for standout performances uh, at, the, at the regional level. Um, we're looking at five wicket hauls. We're looking at hundreds. Uh, that's really what we're expecting because that's what we need at international level. And if you're not doing it at regional level, uh, it, it's reasonable expectation to say you're unlikely to do it at international level. So we are looking for those X factor players, but players that can can bowl at you know 140 k's, um, uh, spinners that can can turn it both ways and, and take wickets, um, and similarly batters that can that can score big hundreds. And and that's what international teams need to be successful and to win ICC tournaments and to to move up the rankings. And therefore, if we want to see it at the international level, it's crucial we see it at the regional domestic level. Um, so you're right. I think Darren and his team will be looking very keenly at a uh, Super 50. And I think we'll all be looking at the younger players coming through, maybe those CCC teams and the academy team in particular, to see who those next generation of players are. And we've seen some great performances from the youngsters in CPL, the Matthew Fords, the Pittmans, the Josephs, etc. And um, yeah, hopefully they'll continue to shine along with other players in the in the CG United Super 50 and and start to knock down the door of the selectors to say that they, they've got the skills and they've got the the desire to um, to represent the West Indies and become part of that next generation um, that we that we hope to give them all the cricket and the support they need to become the best possible cricketers they can because that's our role at Cricket West Indies. Yeah. Okay, uh, Johnny, we're going to leave it there. Thanks for talking to us as as usual. Safe trip to Guyana and um, the CPL um, business end of the tournament. Not sure based on your travel schedule if you'll be catching any of qualifier two tonight, but I'm I'm, I'm certainly you and certainly you'll enjoy the final on Sunday. Thanks, man. Thank you very much indeed, guys. Okay, Johnny Grave there. He's CEO of uh, Cricket West Indies, and he's en route to Guyana, where the uh, qualifier two will be played this evening, and the final comes up on Sunday. And uh, in our next segment, Ricardo, we'll be talking some football and the Jamaica's reggae girls who are seeking some history uh, by qualifying for the Olympics in Paris next summer.